What's up guys, my name is Dari and I hope that you have a wonderful day. In this video, I want to talk about Eloquent's one-to-one -one relationship. This is a pretty easy relationship. If we take a look at the example that we had in the last video, we got our table cars with the ID, name, founded and the description where we store car brands. And we also created a one-to-many relationship. So a new table, car underscore models, where we have our ID, car ID, model name and the timestamps stored. The one-to-one -one relationship is pretty self-explanatory. We want to keep our cars table, but we want to create a new table called headquarters, where we store the headquarters of our cars, because every car has one headquarter. So what I want to do is to hop to our terminal. Now, what do we need? Well, we need our migration and the model. So let's say PHP artisan making me a model called headquarter, and let's add the dash M flag for the migration. All right, our model has been created and our migration as well. What do we need to do next? We need to define our table. So let's hop to Visual Studio Code. Let's go to our migration that we just created, the create headquarters table. And we basically could copy everything from our last migration that we have, but that's actually not what I want to do. I want to create it one more time. What do we have? We have our ID and uh, let's give it the name of ID. We have a table with an unsigned integer, which will reference to the ID in our cars table. We have a string, table string, with the name headquarters. We have another string, so table string again, called country. So we want to store the country as well. We do have our timestamps, and right below our timestamps, we need to connect our car underscore ID somehow to the ID inside our cars migration. I mean this one, my bad. Let's say table, foreign, car ID. So our foreign key is the unsigned integer car ID on the line below. Let's say that we want to reference it to the ID that we have once again, right here. Then we want to say that it's on the table cars and on the lead, we want to cascade. All right, let's go to iTerm. And in here, we need to migrate. So PHP artisan migrate again. Our migration has been fixed. What I usually do is just to double check in my database to see if everything went well. So in our MySQL, let's say show tables. Headquarters has been added. Let's say desk headquarters. All right. And where I usually look at is my primary key and my foreign key. And as you can see, our ID is our primary key and our car underscore ID is our mole, so our foreign key. We need to insert some data. But before we do that, let's select everything from cars once again. Uh, well, this does not look very good, but you can see that my ID is one. So what we could do is to say we want to insert into headquarters, the columns car underscore ID, headquarters, and the country. Now the values are ID number one, headquarters of Audi is located in Ingolstadt and it's in Germany. Excuse, Germany. All right, let's hit enter. One row has been affected, so let's select everything from headquarters. All right, one row has been added. And the next step that we need to do is to create our relationship in the model. So let's go to Visual Studio Code. Let's open our car.php. And as you might know, the methods defining relationships are on the eloquent model itself. In our car.php, let's create a new method. So public function headquarter. So it has the same name as the associated model. So headquarter.php. What we want to do right here is to return this access operator has one. So every car has one headquarter. Inside the parentheses of our has one method, we need to pass in at least one instance. And this is the fully qualified class name. So in our case, it's headquarter, colon, colon, class. And let's end it with a semicolon. If we compare the one-to-one -to, -one to the one-to-many relationship that we created, the one-to-many, it's not necessary to define a relationship inside the headquarter.php, what we did with our car model, because we created a car method right here. We could actually do it, and I will show you in a second how it works when we finish the one-to-one -one relationship. 
So what we need to do is to go to our controller. So cards controller. Let's go to our, let's see where it is, the show method that we have. And since we already have to find a car, we could basically create a new variable, HQ. We set it equal to our car. And we want to pull data from the headquarter method that we have. Now, if we save it, nothing will happen. What I usually do is to test it out and to see if it works. So let's say DD variable HQ, save it. Let's go to Google Chrome, refresh the page. Let's click on Audi and you can see my DD. Let's open attributes and you can see my headquarters, country. Well, the created at and updated at are both null, so that doesn't matter. So let's hop back to Visual Studio Code and let's get rid of both lines of code that we have because I want to do it a little bit different. What I want to do is to move to our UI. So the show.blade.php. And since we're returning one single row, we don't need to loop over something because we're sending back an object. So what we could do is to, let me actually show it to you. Variable car, access operator, headquarter. Save it. Let's go to Visual Studio Code, refresh it. We have all of our previous data and you can see that we have our ID, car ID, headquarters, country, created at, updated at, of our one-to-one -one relationship. We're printing out everything at the moment, but what if you want to access a specific value? So what we could do is to add another access operator right after headquarters and define the column that we want to print out. So let's say country. Save it, Google Chrome, refresh it, Germany has been printed out. So I don't want to keep it like this. Let's go back, let's get rid of our variable. And what I want to do is to create a paragraph right below my H1. Let's give it a class of text-lg, so text large, text-gray-700 for the color, and the padding y-axis is six. So inside my paragraph, we could basically say, Variable, car, headquarter, just what we did. And what I want to do is to print out, and this might look pretty weird, the column headquarters, or the value inside the column headquarters. Save it, refresh the page, and right below Audi, Ingolstadt has been printed out. Now what we could do is to add a comma right after, and print another variable, so car, headquarter, country, Save it, Chrome, refresh it, and the headquarter of Audi is in Ingolstadt, Germany. Now that was it. But like I said, there's also an option to access the cars from the headquarters. Right now we're accessing the headquarters out of the car Audi. Let's say that in the future you're building an application and you have a filter where customers can choose from the headquarter locations. So they have a checkbox right here. So they check Ingolstadt and specific data from Ingolstadt has been printed out. Well, for that, we need to go to our headquarters model. So let's do that. Let's open it right here, right below our has factory. We need to define an inverse one-to-one -one relationship. So we want to say that we have our function, so public function car, which references to the car.php model that we have. And what we want to do inside our method is to basically return this belongs to parentheses semicolon. So a headquarter belongs to a specific car, if that makes sense. And once again, we need to pass in the class. So car colon colon class, save it. And honestly, I don't want to make a separate controller. So let's go to our cars controller. Let's go up and let's use app forward slash models forward slash headquarter, save it. Let's go down to our show method again, and let's create a new instance right here of HQ. It's equal to headquarter, colon, colon, find that specific car, far underscore dump our HQ. Save it, go to Chrome, refresh it, and you can see all the data that we have, but we inversed it. So we use the headquarters model to pull in data from the Audi. Thanks for watching this video. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, click on that subscribe button.